Hey everybody, it's Brad here, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade from Expanse 1.6 to Expanse 1.7. There's a few new features in Expanse 1.7 that I'm super excited for you guys to try out. I'll show them off in this video over here. Uh, but today we're just going to talk about uh, the process of making sure a scene that you made in Expanse 1.6 works in Expanse 1.7. And it's pretty easy, so I think it'll be pretty quick. I'm here in Unity 2022.3, uh, uh, the LTS version. Um, as a note, we dropped support for anything below 2022.3 in Expanse 1.7 because we use a couple of the features in 2022.3 to make the workflow easier. Right now I'm using 1.6.14 um, and this scene is working fine. I've just got two cloud layers set up um, and now I'm going to switch to using Expanse uh, 1.7. Okay, and initially it does work, but uh, you can see we have this warning, game object has been destroyed, coming from the date time controller. So this is coming from the fact you can see the night sky uh, component here is, is, is missing or is empty. Um, and this is because the way that stars work in Expanse 1.7 is actually different. We replaced the bespoke star and nebula generators and renderers with a system that can just render any skybox behind the sky, up to four skyboxes composited together. Um, this is a lot more flexible and it lets you do kind of cooler stuff with different nebula and star textures or even skyboxes if you want to throw things like a planet behind the sky or, or, or a big kind of like ship or something like that. Um, but the way to fix it is to come over to the stars um, and, uh, and just delete that. And then we're going to right click, go to expanse, skybox layers and create a skybox layer system. Uh, and you'll see that this has a skybox layer manager that tracks what skybox layers you want to render. And it, it has a skybox layer for the stars that uses this default stars texture that's generated by uh, our stars shader graph. But basically now you can see if I just disable the date time controller and I push the sun underneath the horizon, it's going to look a little bit messed up. Uh, but there we go. You can see now I have stars. And if I rotate the skybox layers game object, it'll rotate the stars um, and the stars transform. We'll do the same. So, okay, re-enabling this. Um, I can now just go to the date time object. I'm gonna say these skybox layers, this is the night sky. Um, and now I can just drag this into the night sky slot and it'll use that game object and rotate that game object accordingly with the date and time. So you can see now, when I drag the minutes forward, it rotates the night sky. Great, so now all of our errors are gone, um, but there's still some things that are a little bit messed up. If you come through the hierarchy here, you can see that the base settings object under here, the planet, uh, the night sky, and the camera settings all have missing scripts. That's because in 1.7, we just merged all of these into one global settings game object that has the quality, but also like the camera night sky and planet settings because you just kind of need one of those for each scene. It doesn't really make sense to have separate game objects for all of them. So the way to, to, to sort of just set up this hierarchy again is just drag the quality settings out, and drag the sky and fog volume out and delete everything else that's under the base settings. And now I'm actually just I'm actually just going to take this volume from the sky and fog volume and drag it over onto the quality settings. Delete this game object, and then I'm going to rename. I'm just going to rename this base. I'll, I'll call it global settings. Now this has all the global settings. If I go over to the game view, you'll see that I've got a bunch of problems here. Right, um, those will all get fixed just by hitting play. Um, it just needs to refresh its reference to the settings object. Great. So now we're good. So that's pretty much everything that'll have broken from Expanse 1.6 to Expanse 1.7. But I'm gonna mention a few other things that have changed too. For one, the lighting model for the fog is slightly different than it used to be. Um, it handles ambient light from the clouds a little bit better when you have situations where the clouds cover the sky. So here if I just roll the fog in, you see that this might look like a little bit different than it used to. Um, and you can just come under here to the atmosphere layer underneath the fog and set multiple scattering multiplier and ambient to one. Um, and that'll probably get you a decent result. You can also tweak the amount of ambient lighting if you want, but one is kind of a physical value. Another thing to note is that fog diffusion, which is a new feature, is enabled by default. But this can suck performance a little bit, so if you want to uh, disable that or if you don't like the way it looks 
Um, you can come over to global settings to fog quality and uncheck fog diffusion. Another thing I wanna just bring up briefly is that the cloud lighting model has changed. It, there's a new multiple scattering model that is pretty similar to the old one, but is a little bit better and more stable um, and does look better um, and, uh, and is, is more physically based. You might need to come into the clouds and play around with your lighting parameters a bit to get them to look the way you want them to. Um, you know, I, I think these look pretty decent already, but um, in particular, like you might need to up the amount of ambient light um, if you really want that super blue look to the clouds. Okay, and then the last thing I want to bring up, and this is totally optional, is uh, you could delete the sun game object. It's, I'm just gonna fuck everything up. And then come over to expanse. Celestial bodies, sun, create a new one. And now it'll have this lens flare on it. Um, and uh, here, if I just make sure to uh, drag over the date time controller onto it, then it'll make sure that it's using the date time controller. Um, this lens flare, here, let's pull the clouds out a little bit. And then let's just, let's move this around so we can actually see it. You can see, this lens flare kind of respects occlusion by clouds. And yeah, I think this just looks kind of nice, but you might not, you might not want a lens flare um, or you might want to, you know, set that up yourself later. All right, that's how you upgrade from Expanse 1.6 to Expanse 1.7. For now, I'll just say thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.